Good afternoon, this is Mr. Kennedy. I am your instructor for World History 2, History 1112. I want to welcome you to the class and thank you for signing up for it. Uh, this video is just going to be a real quick, maybe 15 minutes or so introduction to give you an idea of what to look for and what you're going to be doing. And the first place I want to click is syllabus. That way you kind of, you know what you've gotten yourself into. Here is our course syllabus. And as you see here, History 1112, World History 2. We are a completely online class, so no meeting in person. You can see my email address, jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu, along with my office. I am uh, on the Carroll campus. If you are nearby, feel free to stop by and say hello. And I'll be in my office in Carrollton on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from basically 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Mondays, I'll be on the Douglas campus, and on Thursdays, I'll be on the Noonan campus. Now, what are we going to be doing in this class? We're going to be studying pretty much the 1500s up until the 1970s or so. So we're going to talk about colonization, Napoleon, the rise of the British Empire, industrialization, World War I, World War II, and some other things as well. For the textbook, uh, there is a textbook that you're required to buy for this class, and the textbook can be purchased at any West Georgia Technical College bookstore. I have found it on Amazon, or you can go directly to the Oxford University Press website, and you can buy it a hardcover copy or you can also buy an ebook if you're okay with that. Now, the ebook is a little bit less expensive. The physical book should run you about $60. The ebook, I believe, is $30. I've tried to keep the price down as much as I can. Course attendance, because it is an online course, uh, course. I uh, can't really grade you on whether you're present or not. So what I'm going to do for attendance is if you complete your work for the week, you get counted present. And if you do your work for every single week, you'll get a little bit of extra credit there at the end of the class. Any attendance grade that you get will go underneath the activities and participation section of the gradebook. And I'll show you how your grades can be figured here in just a moment. Plagiarism is a big deal in, in history courses. Um, all the work you do in this class needs to be your own. It needs to be unique to you and it needs to be unique to this class. So whatever you do, uh, whether you think you're the worst writer in the world or the best writer in the world, uh, I, I, I don't really care how good or bad you are at writing. What I do care about is that all the work you do is your own. So don't ask anybody for, for assistance. Answer the questions, do the work yourself, and I promise you that I will reward you properly in the end as long as all the work you do is original. However, there are always some people who do some cheating here and there, whether it's purposeful or not. Um, if you're found to be plagiarizing, then you get a zero on that assignment. If you plagiarize more than once, you can be turned into the dean of students. So whatever you do, make sure that your work is, is original to you. And if you have any questions about anything, uh, whether you know, you're afraid of being tagged for plagiarism or something like that, go ahead and email me. I, I really don't mind helping students, and that's, that's what I want to do is teach people how to do history the right way. Now, as far as grading goes, uh, there are two tests. There's a midterm exam, there's a final exam. The midterm exam is the first half of the class. The final exam is the second half of the class, so it's not going to be cumulative. There are four assignments that I call reflection papers. Each one's worth 5%. So five times four is 20% total for reflection papers. You have to do a museum review, meaning you have to go to a museum. That will be 10% of your grade. The quizzes and your attendance equal 8% of the grade. And then discussion boards will equal 12% of the grade. 
Then last but not least, there is a research essay that you have to do. That's 10% of the grade. And uh, anybody and everybody taking history has to do an essay. It doesn't matter if you have myself as a teacher or somebody else. Um, it, it's a requirement of the school. Now for exams, there are two exams, as I just said, they're not cumulative. Probably going to be multiple choice, maybe a short essay question or something like that here and there, but not cumulative at all. Each reflection paper you do is going to be based off of an assigned reading that you'll find in the different lessons folders. And they're in many ways opinion based papers. You're going to have to read a primary source. You're going to have to analyze and interpret it. And then you're going to have to tell me what you think about it, as well as why you think the way you do. Some of these readings you may like, some you may hate, some you may not understand. That's okay. The important thing is, though, that you can tell me why you like it, why you hate it, why you didn't understand it, and how that made you feel. The idea behind this is to, well, A, help you read primary source documents, and B, be able to take a document and give your own input into it, because that is something that you do very much in the real world in a job setting. For the museum exhibit review, as I said, you're expected to visit one of the following history museums and then write a two and a half to three page double spaced review of that museum. <clears throat> and I have some questions here that you can look at, such as does the museum explain the exhibits adequately? Does the layout of the museum make sense? Is there something the museum does well? Is there something the museum needs to improve on? If you answer those questions, you should have no problem getting two and a half to three pages. And as far as what museums you can go to, I do have a list here of museums. Some of them are in Atlanta, some are in West Georgia, some of them are further away. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you're interested in, how much money you want to spend, how if you want to make a day trip of it, or just an hour or two. Each one of these blue links on the syllabus is a clickable link, so that way you can click on the museum website, find out if it's for you or not, and see if you think it's worth the money. Some of these museums have student discounts. Some of them are completely free. Others are free if you go to the public library and you check out a Georgia Park Pass. The Atlanta History Center, it's about $20. It's well worth it. The West Georgia Museum in Tallapoosa, it's $2. And you get what you pay for. But there are a number of different things here. I don't think you'll have any trouble finding something that you're interested in. And if you do need assistance or ideas or suggestions, of course, that's what I'm here for to help you with. For activities and participation, each week there is a quiz you have to do and your quiz grades will go into activities. Any extra credit I give you will go into activities and of course attendance just for doing your work that will count in activities as well. For discussion boards there are I think it's 12 discussion boards I've made. There's a couple of weeks where you don't have a discussion board but your discussion boards gonna be related to those primary source documents. So when you have a primary source document you'll read it, uh, you'll have the reflection paper you could do on your document but you also have a discussion question where you'll answer some short questions about the document also. Then for that essay, we're not going to worry too much about it here on day one. I don't want to freak you out. I just want you to know it exists right now. And it says you must complete a five to seven page essay that explains the causes of World War I. Please consider the topics of nationalism, imperialism, alliances, and the immediate events leading up to it. We won't talk about World War I until pretty close to the end of the class. That's what makes this a research paper. You'll need to do a little bit of work throughout the semester so that you can write your paper there at the end. Um, I know five to seven pages sounds like a lot, but 
I've given you topics here you can use to help you get to that five to seven page um, length. But once again, don't worry about the SLOSA too much right now. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Extra credit, you may visit and complete one additional museum exhibit review from the list above. So basically, if you go to a second museum and you write a second museum review, then I will give you two points, two entire points on your final grade. The last thing you see here is the course schedule. This is a course the 11th of January. This is lesson one. This is the first week of the semester. And we're gonna talk about chapter 15. So I'm gonna make a second video momentarily as soon as I get done recording this one that will have your, your information, your lecture on that. All work for this week will be due on Monday night. I do my class Tuesday through Monday, that way, if you have any problems Saturday or Sunday, if I don't see your email, I can come in the office on Monday, answer your question, and you can still get your work turned in. For this week, you'll see that sometime between um, Tuesday and Monday night at 11.59 p.m. the 17th, you need to find time to do your first student introduction post and then your chapter 15 quiz. Next week, you see a new topic, chapter 16 quiz. Week three, another topic. There's your first true discussion question for week three, and then your chapter 17 quiz, so on and so on. I mean, you see it there in front of you. The bigger assignments, like the reflection paper, you see reflection paper one, reflection paper two, they're in bold so that they draw a little bit more attention. The midterm exam is the week of March 8th. Reflection 3. Spring break is on uh, the week of April the 5th. And here you see Reflection Paper 4, Museum Review, your essay. And then last but not least, the final exam will be somewhere at the end of the semester. It's a full week that you get it available to you, so it's going to overlap a little bit with week 14. But fear not, week 14 is a long way away, the final exam is a long way away, it'll make sense as we get closer to it. <clears throat> also, the course schedule is available just by clicking on the syllabus tab. You don't have to go all the way into the syllabus itself. I made it easy for you, it's available right here too. I'm going to click on lessons and I'm going to just give you a quick tour of what lessons looks like. Here's your your introductory video. You're probably wondering how I did that. It's magic. Your reflection paper drop boxes are right here and you see reflection paper number one. You'll choose a reading from lesson three or lesson four and you have to have that turned in by February the 7th, 11.59 p.m. Reflection paper two is there, reflection paper three, reflection paper four, as, long with, as well as a little reminder that tells you what it's about. Museum review drop box is right there. Now with your museum review, I wanna make sure that you know uh, the 24th of April is the due date. That's the absolute last day it can be turned in, but you can actually turn it in at any time. Uh, if you go to a museum on MLK weekend, you could turn it in MLK weekend and then you're done with it for the entire semester. So this is one assignment that you can do at any time during the semester up until the due date of April 25th and I sincerely recommend doing it sooner rather than later. Uh, do it in the first half of the semester. It will make things much easier for you, I promise. The SLO Dropbox is right here. I'm not even going to click on it right now because I don't want you to think about it yet. We'll talk about it throughout the semester several times. And then you see here lesson one, two, three, four, so on and so on. Within each of these lesson folders, you'll find some terms you should know. You'll find a PowerPoint that comes with the book. You'll find the PowerPoint that I made directly myself. You'll find a quiz that goes with the textbook. So you read the textbook chapter and then you answer the questions for the quiz. And then if there's a primary source reading, then 
there will be a discussion question that goes with that as well. So for example, lesson four, primary source readings. There are three readings for the week of lesson four, the discretion, destruction of the Indies, the Aztec account of the conquest of Mexico, and Tupac Amaru, the lifetimes and execution of the last Inca. These are three readings that will open. You read these. You kind of write down your thoughts, your ideas, whatever it might be. You read the destruction in the Indies. You do the same thing. You read it. You figure out how you feel about it. You get an idea of what's going on. And then you would come and you would answer your discussion question. For your reflection paper, you only have to use one of those readings and then you do the reflection paper. I will talk about that in a little bit more detail before the first reflection paper is due. So if you just got really confused, don't worry about it. I will spend some time on each lesson kind of guiding you on what to do. Now I'm going to record lecture videos two o'clock on Tuesday afternoons and I will start a Blackboard Collaborate session. So when, if you want to log in to Blackboard at two o'clock on Tuesday afternoons, I will record a video, you can watch it, and if you do watch me record the video, I'll give you a little bit of extra credit for taking time to be with me every Tuesday at two o'clock. Now, once again, that's not required. You don't have to come to every week's lecture recording. But if you do happen to show up, you'll get a little extra credit. And it's a great chance to ask questions or if you don't understand something to take a minute or two to talk with me. But I don't want to take too much of your time. It's an introductory video. We're going to be with each other for a long, long period, 14, 15 weeks. But at least you can put a little bit of understanding to what you see. Uh, you get to hear my voice a little bit. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, anything like that, send me an email. I love interacting with people. I love when people stop by to visit. And I just want us to have a great, successful semester. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.